Okay, so on to building our first controller and then registering this uh, anywhere within our app. And in this case, it will be the index.php file. Now, before we do anything, we need to create a place for our controllers to live, but we also want to auto load these in. We don't have to be requiring files everywhere. Uh, it's just gonna get very, very messy, particularly if you're registering lots of routes with controllers. So what I usually do is create a folder within the root directory called app. This is just where all of my kind of non-public files live. So uh, all of my classes, any of my controllers, middleware, any of that kind of stuff. So inside of this directory, I'm just gonna create a controllers folder. And if you are new to uh, Slim, if you're new to auto loading, the convention here is that we have a directory where all of our auto loaded classes live. And then we give these capital letters. So we're gonna be using this in our namespace to load in classes. Now, if that doesn't make sense, don't worry too much for now. We'll take a look at how this works in just a moment. So what we want to do is just create a home controller, which we won't be able to access just at the moment, but we'll go ahead and update our composer file to auto load all of our controllers in in just a moment. So I'm gonna call this home controller. And again, I'm using the uppercase convention here for each word that I'm defining. And we're gonna go ahead and start to define this out. Now, to be able to auto load this effectively, we need to give this a, a namespace. This is uh, basically where it lives. Now, we're going to call our app app. You can change this to whatever you want when you set up your auto loading. But for now, we'll just keep it as app. And we know that this lives in the controllers directory. So that's the namespace that we give it. So the full namespace to home controller now is app controllers home controller. You just follow the directory structure down and that's how it works. So let's define out this class. So let's say home controller, and we're gonna be doing a little bit more with this later, uh, but for now, let's set up auto loading. Let's create a method in here, which will be our home uh, view eventually in the next part, and then we'll see this working. We'll register it over in index.php. So over in composer.json then, this is where all of our dependencies live, but with composer, we can also define out how we want to auto load things within our application. So we create an auto load property here and create an object. And inside of here, we choose how we want to auto load. So in my case, I'm gonna be auto loading with PSR4. Now this is a standard of auto loading and I'll leave a link to this in the course links if you want to read more about it. There's nothing really special about this. It just defines out how we auto load files. And in our case, we've already taken a look at this. We load from a vendor namespace, which in our case is the app directory, controllers and we follow that directory structure down. So we know that we gave our app the name app. This here references what we gave over here. So whatever you call this, you're gonna to wanna to name this here as well. And we use two backslashes because we need one backslash for this to register. But of course we need to escape that. So that's why we do two backslashes. So we just choose now as the value for this property where we're auto loading from. And in this case, it's the app directory just here within our root project. So now that we've done this, we need to basically dump Composer's autoloader. So you're gonna to want to run Composer, dump autoload, and you can also use the optimized flag as well, usually better for larger projects. So now that that's done, we can actually use this class just by its namespace. So if we need to create a new instance of it, if we need to pass it through to Slim for it to be invoked, that is how we do it now. So traditionally then we would basically define out a route like this. Let's say we did actually want to define out the home page, and we've already seen this in the last example where we just create a callback here or a closure and we return whatever we want to do. And if we had our container active up here, we could use this to reference inside of here. But this gets a little bit messy. If you are defining out all of your routes, even in one file, this gets super messy. So what we're gonna do then, rather than define out this closure, we're gonna define the name or the full namespace and the method to what we want to invoke when someone runs or hits this URI. So let's create over on home controller an index method because we need that method to be able to call it like so. And let's just return home controller just so we know the difference, so home controller. Okay, so over on index.php, now just as a string, and we're gonna look at a slightly different variation of this in a minute, which pretty much does the same thing, but might be a little bit cleaner. We're just gonna define the full path to the namespace, like so, home controller, and then we use a colon, and then the method that we want to run. 
So if you had, say, a contact form, you may have slash contact. Then you may have a contact controller like so. You might have an index. And then when someone submits that form, you might have a post type, the same URI, but this time it would be something like create or store, something like that. So hopefully that makes sense. But of course, for now, we're just going to focus on the home controller. And in the next part, we're going to look at our dependencies as well. So now that we've done this and we have our home controller with our index method, we should be able to hit the home page and see that's returned. So even just doing this will massively clear up your code. The other benefit to this is it means that you can create protected methods inside of here if you need to do something else just to break your code up and extract things out to methods just to keep things really tidy. Now, previously with our roots using closures, we can't really do this. It's, you know, it just gets very, very messy. So this means that we have a lot more room to kind of tidy things up. So now that we've looked at the basics of controllers, let's just take a little look at how we may define this out in a slightly cleaner way. So now what we're doing is we're defining out a string, essentially a whole string here to the controller name and the method. Now, what I've seen people do before is basically get rid of this and then go ahead and at the top of your page, just use all of the controllers that you could possibly use. Now, these all may be in a separate file, so you may be requiring in a separate file to register all of your roots. That's absolutely fine. It really doesn't matter how you structure your project. But now what you can do is say something like home controller class, which will give you the full path to this anyway. So you can then concatenate it on. So this works nicely because just at a glance of all of these registrations, you can see exactly what you're doing without the full path in the way. And you can see here, we get exactly the same result. So just a little tip there, you may wish to do this. I find it looks a little bit cleaner uh, than the solution of passing the whole string in manually. So now that we've done this, we're gonna take a look at how we access our container within our controller. Because at the moment, if we wanted to say something like this database and maybe do a query in here to pull something back, we can't really do this. So we're gonna look at a super simple, clean way to do this in the next part.